All right. So, what have I got here? Black liquid plastic onyx. Mix ratio one to one. All right. Um, it's like the polyurethane white. This is polyurethane onyx. Ultra black urethane resin. Ordered this. Got it in two days from Amazon. I know it was like maybe $36. I will, um, I will double check that and attach that in to the comments from the, in this post here. So <clears throat> I saw somebody on YouTube using this. I'm going to say that it was Claire. Um, not a hundred percent. And then I saw somebody else use it, but it was somebody else that I'd never seen before. So, and that's, that's pretty good because I'm on YouTube for forever. But, um, so we're going to try this. And what I did was I ordered this. And because whoever was, who was demonstrating this was demonstrating it with Halloween things. So... I know pumpkins are supposed to be orange, but blacks aren't, or bats aren't. Um, let's see what else. There's some skulls, uh, some different skulls. You know, anyway, you got an idea. <clears throat> I'm not going to mix up that much because with this, you seriously have. 30 35 seconds to get it mixed okay now i'm gonna get this open and i'm gonna i'm gonna pour it in two separate things and then we'll, we'll stir it and pour it together i'll be back so i took them out of the box and i thought well we're gonna go over this too this looks like i've got a prescription right um, may cause skin irritation, can be, may cause allergic reaction, reaction, can cause, oops, I don't really want to tear that off, let me do this. Okay. All right. Um, harmful if inhaled, so that means that I'm going to use my uh, respirator. May cause allergy or asthma symptoms, so forth and so on. <clears throat> so, in other words, I'm going to make sure I wear my respirator with this. All right. Now, this says stir or shake part A and part B thoroughly before dispensing. So, both of these are going to need to be shaken really well. This is another insert. It's a mercury-free urethane resin that cures at room temperature to a deep black solid plastic onyx. Resins offer the convenience of a one-to-one -one by volume mix ratio and have very low viscosity, so they are easy to mix and pour. Onyx resins have an ultimate shore hardness of 80D and offer higher physical properties and higher heat resistance versus other purpose pur general purpose resins onyx resins are available in two speeds onyx fast resin has a, a pot life of 2.5 minutes and a cure time of 10 to 15 minutes while onyx slow has a pot life of five minutes and a cure time of 90 minutes um so this is uh i'm pretty sure this is onyx fast <clears throat> um yep this is on it's fast this tells me i have uh i have 2.5 minutes <laughs> all right so i won't be talking when i'm mixing on the attack since the mayor never passed an opportunity to parade the sheriff proceed before the town council 
but he remains silent. Moving on. Mayor Wingate, I understand you have a presentation to make to the council tonight. Is that right? Yes, I do, Chet said, standing up. I have some very exciting news to share with the council and the assembled citizens here tonight. And it could not have come at a better time. Recognizing the difficulties the sheriff's department has in cases just like this, I have at my own expense acquired a very highly trained, very expensive canine dog, which I would like to present to the sheriff's department as a gift. A canine? Do you need a canine, Sheriff Weber? This has never come up before. No, Kirby, we don't need a canine. Especially not like the one Chet has for us. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with a police dog, Councilwoman LaDonna, Jordan said. What about liability? What liability? The mayor asked. This isn't some nut off the street. Like I said, he's a highly trained animal. Trained in what, Chet? I've got a nephew who's a canine officer in San Diego. Some are trained in search and rescue. Some are used to find bombs or drugs, or to assist their handlers on patrol. And who's going to be the handler anyway? That's the beauty of all this, the mayor said. This animal can do it all, Kirby. He's cross-trained in every aspect of police work. Why, he can find a lost child in the morning, detect a truckload of narcotics at lunchtime, and take down an armed suspect before dinner. He's like a four-legged green beret. Really? And just who is going to handle this wonder dog of yours, Chet? Archer. Archer? Your son, Archer? That's right. An archer is trying to handle a highly trained animal like you're talking about. What did he do? Take a correspondence course. Someone in the crowd guffawed, but the mayor ignored it. Just let me demonstrate what Baxter can do, okay? I know you'll be impressed. All right, Chet. But I'm warning you right now, if this is another one of your harebrained schemes, you just wait and see, Kirby. Like I said, you're about to be impressed. Very impressed. This is going to be a historic night in Big Lake. And like I said, Baxter is not going to cost the town one red cent. I'm donating him to the sheriff's department. Okay, get on with it, Kirby said. Chet nodded at Dolan Lee, who opened a side door in the room and said, You're on, Archer. Nothing happened for a long minute. Then there was the sound of Archer saying, Come on, Baxter. Come. Still nothing. And finally Archer backed into the room, dragging a reluctant Baxter by his leash. Which wasn't an easy task, because the dog had his feet dug in and didn't want to move. Seeing the highly trained canine the portly deputy was dragging, the room erupted into uproarious laughter. The mayor tried to speak, but the hoots and catcalls from the crowd drowned him out. Even Kirby Templeton and Mel Walker were wiping tears from their eyes. Baxter ignored all of them and closed his eyes. That's your idea of a police dog? Templeton finally managed to say, pointing at the animal before them. He may not look like much, but looks are deceiving, the mayor said. That's part of why the Russians use dogs like Baxter, who would expect them to be capable of what he is. He's kind of a, a stealth canine. Why, he's easily worth twenty, maybe thirty thousand dollars. And I'm giving him to the sheriff's department. The Russians. You're telling me this mutt is from Russia? He's not a mutt, Kirby. I told you, he's a trained canine. And yes, Boris Pasternak trained him when he was with a secret police organization in Russia. Boris Pasternak? Who's he? The fellow that opened the martial arts studio over on Maple Street, Mel Walker said. Are you kidding me, Chet? It takes years for somebody to emigrate from Russia, probably longer with the background this guy claims to have. If the Russians would even let him out of the country, which I doubt, that mutt's not more than a couple of years old. He's not a mutt, Kirby. He's... Yeah, I know. He's a highly trained canine. We heard you the first time. Mayor Wingate, perhaps you should show the council and the people here just what this amazing animal can do, Councilwoman Smith Abbott suggested. Sure, Chet, let's see it, Templeton said. It's not like we have anything else to do. All right then, the mayor said. Officer Reed, bring in the agitator. What's an agitator? Asked Templeton. It's a person whose job is to. Well, agitate, the mayor told him. I thought that was your job, Chet, someone shouted from the back of the room, bringing another round of laughter. Ignoring the crowd, the mayor again told Dolan to bring in the agitator. Dolan stepped into the hallway, then came back and said, he wants a raise first, Chet. 
He said otherwise he's going home. Oh, for God's sake, Chet said with frustration and stalked to the doorway. Oh, Daryl, you get getting here right now. Forget it. Chet, it was in the park the other day. Wait for it, Parks told him. Wait for it. Wait for what? And then Baxter yeah. farted. The dog was already prone to flatulence, but this was no regular passing of gas. No, this was a lot. What did you do to that animal? Whoever asked rubbing his eyes once they were safely out on the sidewalk and inhaling the fresh air again. Me? All I did was feed him, Park said with a smug smile. What the hell did you feed him? Four bean burritos and a bowl of chili. Damn, it's a wonder he didn't explode. Well, he kind of did. You are one devious son of a bitch, Parks, Weber said with admiration. Thank you. It's a gift. Around them the crowd was beginning to thin out as people wandered off, the evening's excitement over. At least for a few minutes their attention had been drawn away from the terrible events that had taken place at Lost Horse Lake. I have to admit, you're a man of the word, Weber complimented his friend. He said he would, and sure enough, that dog made an impression that nobody on the town council is going to forget any time soon. Their conversation was interrupted by the sound of a loud argument going on between the mayor and two of the town councilmen taking place near them on the sidewalk. Get in there and get that stinking animal out of there before we have to burn the whole place down, Kirby Templeton was telling the mayor. I'm not going in there, Chet said. He's not my responsibility. I donated the dog to the sheriff's department. He's their problem now. I don't think so, Weber said. I told you last week I wanted nothing to do with that mongrel, and I still don't. Chet, get it out of there before I tell the sheriff to shoot it. I'm not going back in there until you fumigate the place, Weber said. Besides, Kirby, with all that gas in there, I'd be afraid to fire a gun for fear of blowing the whole damn block up. Oh, it's not that bad, the mayor insisted. If it's not that bad, then get in there and get that dog of yours, Mel Walker said. Forget it. I'm not going in there. And I told you, it's not my dog anymore. You brought him, so go get him out, Kirby insisted. Well, now wait a minute. Technically, Archer brought him. And he is the canine handler. No way, Daddy. I told you I didn't want to be no canine officer. Why don't you ever listen to anything I say? Because you never say anything worth listening to, that's why, you big dummy. I don't want to be a dog handler. I want to go home to my Callie Joe. Now you listen to me, Archer. I'm ordering you to go in there and get that dog. No. What? Did you say no to me? Just who do you think you are, young man? Archer squared his shoulders and for the first time in his life, he asserted himself with his father. I'm a deputy, Daddy. I don't work for you. I work for Jimmy. And I only take my orders from him. Now I'm going home to my wife. And for once, you can deal with your problem yourself. Everybody stood with their mouths agape as Archer turned on his heel and walked away, not believing what they had just witnessed. Finally, Weber put a comforting hand on the mayor's shoulder and said, Well, you were right about one thing, Chet. It's a historic night. Your little boy just grew up. It has to be the funniest thing I've heard in a long time, Marcia said an hour later, as she took a drink from her glass of diet soda. I wish I could have been there to see it. Trust me, seeing it may have been hilarious, but smelling it was another story altogether, Weber told her, taking a slice of pizza from the box.